So fantastic. So welcome everyone warmly on my podcast. Uh, that would be so wild because I had a break. That's a really long break. But today I've got a beautiful soul. Before I'm going to dive deep into the podcast and unravel for you, uh, who is with us today, I would like to tell you. So master your emotion, find your own truth and live your own truth. That's the name of my podcast. I was guided to give that name for my podcast. And also I was guided to give you the tiny bit information about the numerology about the angels we're going to talk about the angels as well today but i'm just really drawn to give you the number 51 today is a number of the podcast it's an amazing number because that's going to give you uh, clarity and that's going to give you also uh, the way how you can find your i would like to say uh, not really destiny day because I'm not truly really believing in that, but definitely your angel is saying, take a responsibility for your own stuff and just only focus, what would you like to see in front of you? Don't bother around the chaos outside because that's going on and I'll be going and we'll be going. That's a distraction. That's completely distraction for you to not go and be, um, I would like to say, uh, the one word is coming to my head, but I don't want to say it, that's that. Uh, definitely it would be just only drawn to okay that would be a better word drawn to so that any kind of the obstacles the angels saying that will be removed but when you're going to allow it for yourself to be who you truly are they're going to remove it for you you need to trust the process definitely trusting the process and definitely my guest is going to uh, unravel something more about it about the angels so if you are drawn to the angels the numerology I'm really inviting you, go and do some research. I'm not going to give you all the information. I'm not here to give you all everything. Just when you're putting on the tray and say, here you go, that's yours. Because I will, going to, I will be disempowering you. It's not my way of doing that stuff. Just only triggering something, planting the seeds, and you need to nourish yourself. So today we've got a beautiful guest. I've been drawn to find this beautiful soul. I don't know how, but happen, divinely happen. A beautiful, beautiful soul. She's living in the UK, uh, but I'm guessing she's not from the UK. But anyway, she's going to unravel more. Beautiful soul, Ray. She's a beautiful, divine, I would like to say goddess. That's a channel message is coming to me. That's a beautiful channel goddess from the Egypt. I don't know what I'm saying about but that would be a channeling message. But what she's doing, I can give you a briefly uh, description. She's supporting other souls. She's supporting other souls to see their beautiful, bright future and heal their past and dive deep in their soul so they can find their own life. There's a purpose. Uh, I'm just only tangling my tongue now. The purpose of the life. So welcome, one me, Ray. How are you feeling? And can you tell a little bit more about yourself? What would you like to share at the beginning? What the people can get from your talk, from your uh, beautiful, divine, I would like to say, channel message today? Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much um, for that for that introduction. And goddess-wise, yes, uh, I did have a past life as a goddess in Egypt. I was, I've also um, had a past life as a goddess in Glastonbury at the White Spring. Um, so, so, so yes, I've had a few past lives as a goddess, amongst other things. Um, not all of them nice, um, as you know, our past lives um, not just have the great things we did, but also some of the not so great things um, uh, that 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 we that we did. So, yeah, my purpose is really to help inspire other people to take charge of their destiny, to actually understand why they are here their purpose, their reason for being here and to actually start working with that and using that so that they can make this one of the best lives that they can possibly have. Um, and yes, as you said, I work with the angels uh, all, all the time. You know, I do angelic Reiki as a therapy. I do future life progression. Where I take people into the future. I do past life regression, obviously going into the past, mm. um, as well as doing or angel oracle cards and guided meditations because I like guiding people. It's as it's as you were saying, you know, when you um, were talking about the angel numbers, that you give the information, but you give enough that people can then go and do their own research. And that is part of the empowerment side of what I do. You know, I'm a guide. You know, even when I take you into past lives or future lives 
or even do the cards or guide meditations. I'm guiding you on a journey for you to get the information, um, the insights yourself. I'm just steering you in the right direction and asking the right questions for you to get the answers you need. And again, with Angelic Reiki, I am just there as a bridge between you and the angels. And it's between you and the angels that you get the healing and the information from. So, yeah, so that's that's my purpose in this life, is to be a guide to help others um, to step onto their spiritual path, um, find their power and become who they are supposed to be in this lifetime by taking charge of their destiny. Wow, that's amazing. I'm so fascinating about the future, um, but we're going to get there. But would you mind just when you share some information, how did you get in that point in the life? But I'm assuming when you were three years old, four years old, you didn't do the Reiki or maybe you did. I don't know. Maybe you, did, you tapped to the future. Maybe you had some, you know, memory from that stuff. I don't know. Can you share I something? <laughs> who who knows? Maybe, maybe I did. Maybe I did. Uh, maybe I did. Um, I was a very curious child. Um, so I was always asking questions. I was one of those annoying children who would be asking questions constantly all the time. Yeah. Um, but I do come from a spiritual background. My mum um, did palmistry and psychometry. My aunt read um, tarot mm. cards. Um, my dad was quite happy ferrying my mum to spiritualist churches. And obviously me and my sister had to go along as well because you couldn't leave, obviously you can't leave children indoors. So I was always in that environment. Um, so it's always there. I, you know, I knew there was energies, um, spirits um, about, you know, when we lived uh, the first seven years of my life, we lived in a block of flats and they had um, in the basement, they had the laundry room and the playroom. And I always didn't feel comfortable in either of those. It was like there was some energy or something um, down there, which obviously at the time as a child, you don't really understand. You just yeah. know. I, I don't like that. But when I look back now, I go, ah, oh, yeah, I can, I, I, I can, I can see that. Um, so I was always in that background and I was always interested and fascinated um, with kaleidoscopes, um, which now turns out sacred geometry, which is why I use. Um, I was interested. I love looking at the stars, the sky, the clouds. Obviously, that's the astrology now. You know, I got a, the telescope. Um, so there's lots of things that I look back now and I see that I was doing my childhood, you know, and I was an avid reader. I mean, I still am. I can get through a book within a couple of hours, two, three hours, um, because as soon as I start reading, that's I'm just reading. But I was also a storyteller. I've made up I made up stories um, and that which is, you know, how I now guide people. So, again, that was all indications when I was a child. Um, and then kind of like as children do, teenagers, you kind of like you know go out of that thing you know you know I dabbled in runes and spirituality and stuff like that but it wasn't really something as teenagers you, you know back in the 80s that wasn't really kind of like the thing um but everyone knew about my mum um and that she did psychometry and in fact a lot of the um, girls at school um would cut bits of their hair put it in an envelope and give it to me to take to my mum so she could do some psychometry on it for them to tell them what was going to be happening um but there's one incident that I remembered recently that happened when I was a teenager is that a group of my friends wanted to do the Ouija board and I was never interested in doing the Ouija board um, and I said well I'm not I'm not interested and they said well could you come along and make sure we're safe and of course, what do I do now? I hold the space for people to be in that safe environment. So even back then, when I didn't understand or know it, people were picking up. That's right. what that that that's that's what I was doing. So fast forward um, to my uh, further on my journey, um, I had a I had a tarot reading done, and the tarot reader said he could see me go on a life changing journey. He kind of like said he thought it was Sri Lanka. Um, I thought, well, OK, you know, only, I've only been to Spain. You know, I've never been anywhere, anywhere else. And that was always with family. Um, so I went on to the Lonely Planet. Obviously, computers were not new, but they were newish. Um, so you only had the basics. So I went on to the Lonely Planet to look up Sri Lanka. And they actually had um, an article on Peru. So I read that article. Didn't get on to Sri Lanka. 
Um, thought no more of it. Then a couple of days later, I uh, turned on the TV and there was a Stephen Fry documentary on Peruvian bears. Oh. And because of my background, I kind of like know about synchronicities. And it's like, ooh, okay, that's a bit close. So I got a load of brochures, looked at it and go, I can't afford this, you know, traveling around Peru. Um, you know, it's not the cheapest thing. So again, put it to one side. Then um, some months later, I had to swap mortgages and the both mortgage companies, there was some issue. So they had to give me compensation, which was the exact amount of one of these tours. The exact amount. Oh, wow. Oh, I've so, got to go to Bath. <laughs> I know. So, so I booked it. Um, and then just before I was uh, um, due to go, uh, the one of the women I worked with in my office, uh, her grandfather passed away and she went to clear out his attic. And when she came in a uh, day after clearing out his attic, she said, you'll never guess what I found. And in his attic was an old Lonely Planet guide to Peru and an old Peruvian map. Oh, wow. I, I mean, how how much more? And it was a life-changing trip. I mean, the other 11 people are in my group, although we came from various backgrounds, different ages, you know, different countries, there was it was like we, we'd all known each other. There was just that something where we just all gelled. And even our guide said, you know, he'd never known a group um, as, you know, connected as as we were. Um, but I did the four-day Inca Trail up to Machu Picchu, which was absolutely amazing. But when I was actually on Machu Picchu, I was standing on one of the platforms looking down and suddenly I was transported back in time. And I was actually um, an Incan priest um, talking to people, to Incans below me. I, I was only a few seconds, but it was kind of like, whoa, you, you know, and there were other things that, that happened. And when I came back to this country, I came back in October and I was sitting in the office after afternoon, three o'clock, as it is in the UK, in autumn when you have that horrible wind and rain and it's just dark and it's all yucky. And I thought, you know something, I'd rather be out in that than sitting here in an office in front of a computer. And that's when um, things started shifting and I kind of like changed um, what, you know, what I was doing. And I sort of like stepped back more into my spiritual path um, with that. And, you know, that's when Angelic Craigie then came in and then through Angelic Craigie again, synchronicities, the car angel oracle cards came in, then the... Um, a guide meditations, the past life, the future life, just all started coming um, in. You know, when I, I mean, I'd already known about angels um, since, the, you know, 2000. Um, but back then in the UK, there wasn't really a lot of angel stuff in this country. There's, mm. quite, a bit in, there's quite a bit in America and Ireland, but there wasn't a lot in the UK. Okay. Um, and, you know, Doreen Virtue and um, Diana Cooper weren't really known then. So to get anything angelic, I had to sign up to a Christmas catalogue because that was the only time you could get angel stuff was at Christmas. Yeah. I mean, now you now you can just walk down to the local, um, you know, to a, a local pound shop or something like that. And, you know, they've got angel stuff in there all year round. Um, so, you know, that's a good uh, improvement. You know, in fact, they've got unicorns and dragons as well, which is uh, which is absolutely brilliant to have all that in. And that's really just kind of like how it just all snowballed. And it was all synchronicities that brought the people, the training and um, the clients to me uh, that's allowed me to evolve to where I am now, but also will continue to help me evolve as as I go as I go forward. Um, in in time to complete my purpose in this lifetime, which is to help people on their spiritual path to take charge of their destiny. So you know that is that is my purpose. I know that's my purpose, and this is my last incarnation on Earth. So I've got a lot of work to do to get it done. Oh, wow, that's amazing! Because what, thank you for sharing. But when you've been talking about um, about the Machu Picchu, and when you when you're standing on that uh, ground. And you saw, and you just when you move to the different dimension, 
I was like, uh, I had a really activation in my body. That's like tears came to my eyes. I said, what's going on? Just only through your talking because the people need to know that we, we had recording this podcast just only for them because some of the world is going to activate their own DNA, their own dorma DNA the, from the past, future. It doesn't matter. But that, that's why the reason for that, we are just only gathering together and we are just only giving the word because we know the world's got the power. We know the world's got the frequency and activation so that's why it's so amazing thank you for sharing that and another thing i would like to say yeah that's what the journey and you began you came back completely new it's like a walk in i would like to say walk in the new soul just only the old just only moved say okay that's enough i i've done my work so the new came in that's so amazing so fascinating so how can you um, how can you discover you are able to tap into the future and how can you see it? Because some people couldn't grasp that concept, how you can see the future, how you can see, how you can support them. Yeah, a, a great, great question. <laughs> um, it, it's we as humans, we kind of, and this is, this is something that really does annoy me. We, t- we tell children, you know, to stop imagining things imagination is one of our greatest tools that we can have you know and I was blessed that I was allowed as a child to have image to have imagination because imagination is the creation of all things because if you think about it someone had to imagine a will for the will to be create you know to be created um you know someone had to and I don't like using his name had to think about computers had to imagine what that would be like and they then they came into action so imagination is one of our biggest tools that we have to create um you know to create things in our life and with um future life progression when you're actually in what i like to call awakened dream so that's where you're aware of what's going on around but you're totally relaxed so an easy way to say this was if you're driving from a to b and you got to be and you thought, oh, I don't remember driving this this journey. But, you know, you stopped at traffic lights, you let people cross the road, etc. That's kind of like, well, 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 I can dream you're aware and conscious, but you're in a nice, relaxed state that uh, um, you kind of like enjoy mm. in, enjoy it. So that's really um, what uh, or how we work with future life progression is I take people into a very nice waking dream. Um, again, that's through words, through relaxing their body, et cetera. And then when you're in that state, you tap into your subconscious, to your higher self, um, into your imagination. And that is where you then um, go forwards in time to go and experience a future life. Now, different people experience it in different ways because we all have different dominant senses. So some people may go in and see it. Other people may go in and hear it. Other people may go in and know it. So, you know, uh, examples would be take someone into the future and they go, oh, my God, I can see a black train. It's got this red writing on. I can see all this steam coming out where somebody else would go. Ah, oh, I must be at a train station. I can hear a train. I can hear the steam. I can that where someone would go. But I can't see anything, but I know I'm at a train station. I know that there's a black train there. Um, so people experience it in, diff- in different ways. Um, and when you're in that relaxed state, um, that that um, unconscious um, awareness, you get to explore, and you you also get to feel. You actually feel what's what's go what's going on. Um, I, I mean, again, you're always in control. Um, and if we could, could go to past life stuff, because sometimes in past life horrible things happen, um, but you can sort of like do it so you don't feel it. Um, otherwise, when you are in a past life, you you have. I had a client once um, and uh, she felt a scorpion sting and she actually felt the poison going through. And we kind of like had to quickly take her um, through that. But anyway, and forward. So you actually get to to experience it, but you can actually see um, and ask your your future self um, those questions. So if you so um, so if you take um, a client of mine. Um, I took her into uh, in five years into the future 
and she found herself in Morocco. And as we were doing the questioning, she saw herself uh, running tours there um, in Morocco. You know, she could actually feel, sense, know all the smells, the sights, the sounds, what she was doing, how she was doing it, um, et cetera. Um, what she needed to, you know, and she asked me to, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. You know, what did, what did I do? Um, anyway, so she then, uh, then came back. Um, now, she's always loved Morocco because that's where she went on holiday. And literally within a year, she had quit her job, moved to Morocco, now runs tours over there. It's got her own company. In fact, she was even featured on a Jane McDonald show doing tours in Morocco. Oh. So, you know, and that and that was quicker than five years, because when you know and understand what you need to do and how you got there, you can bring that information back and start using that now in your current life. And if there's things five years in the future, say, and your life hasn't changed or something has happened, you can then go, OK, well, what could I have done differently? And then when you come back, you t you, you do those changes. Um, so that the five years that you saw isn't the five years that actually happens. It's a much better five years. I mean, that's just one one example. I mean, you can go and look at um, selling your house. You know, if you've not been able to sell your house, well, let's go a few years into the future when you have sold it. And, you know, how did you sell it? What did you do to your house? You know, and bring that information um, back. You can go into uh, 10 years into the future. You can go into a future lifetime, you know, so you could go 100, 200, 1,000 years into the future to see where you are and what you're doing. And that can have amazing results as well. I mean, I had another client who um, went into a future lifetime and she saw herself as a teacher. Um, but teaching in the future, teaching in the future is completely different to how it is now. It's a lot more holistic um it's a lot more healthier for for the children you know they're much more rounded and balanced um with with that and when she came back it was interesting because she didn't have children she had no interest in being a teacher but because of what she saw and understood she actually then started to train to be a teacher to try and bring some of that stuff into today's classrooms um mm. so you know it's it's amazing when you when you actually allow your imagination, your subconscious to actually um, give you that answer, those answers, that information, because you can bring that back and start making those changes now, which makes it, you know, which helps it move along quicker and develop more um, than, than it would do if you, if you didn't have that guidance and that information. Wow. It's so amazing. I was just like, oh, there's, I had too many questions just when you pop up in my head. I was like, okay, okay, I need to just only figure out which one is coming first. <laughs> and to mm. be honest, a few questions you answer already because I just only before I just only ask, you just only repeat it. Uh, you just only answer straight away. The one question that the bigger one, probably that lots of uh, souls is only he, um, having that question really deep, deep, deep inside themselves. So that question is like when you go in the past, um, and because some of people just only saying, okay, when I go in the past, I'm going to change my future and then the future will change. Do you agree with that? Should, should we go to our past lives and grab the lesson and apply in our future? Or we can just only forget about the past and let's go tap into the future and just only carry on and focus just only on the future because past is gone. We are not counting on it. Just only forget it. How is your view on okay. that? Uh, well, when I do how I see past life regression, obviously there's di different past life regressionists have different, um, yeah. uh, you know, different things on it. But the way I work is when I take people into the past, it's to the past that is most important um, that they need to learn from, heal from. So it's not affecting them in their current lifetime. So going into the past can actually resolve issues, heal things that are affecting you in your current life already. So, you know, and there's lots of well-documented um, scientific um, uh, information on this that people can can look up and read. You know, you can do your research on it. I mean, it's very well documented. You know, somebody who, um, you know, has a fear of flying in this lifetime 
it may have been that they were a fighter pilot in a previous lifetime or in an air raid or in a plane. And when they go back and they access that information and they heal from it, they no longer have that fear I mean, in their, in their current life. So quite often going, going backwards in time is to give you guidance and information about what might be happening in your current lifetime. So it doesn't necessarily change, you know, so if you were a murderer in a past lifetime, you know, I've had previous lifetimes, I was, you know, I have killed people, you know, that is just how, you know, I've had over 300 past lives, um, you know, and that's, that's really just on this planet, you know, on other planets, you know, God knows how mm -hmm. many. Um, so, you know, you, you, you've, you've, you know, you've been lots of these things, but they, you know, they don't really have any effect on my current life that I know of. And when I've gone back, I've never gone back to those those times because they're things that that don't that, that don't affect me now. Yeah. But going back allows you to actually heal from and learn from, so that when you come into your current life, you no longer, um, you know, are experiencing those issues. But you can also, you know, if you had previous gifts and talents, so. Maybe um, you were a um, a wise healing woman in the past um, and you were able to work with herbs, but maybe you were persecuted, um, burn at the stake, whatever, whatever. So mm -hmm. you, you don't use that stuff in your current life because there's always that little fear at the back of your head. Well, when you go into that past life and you actually um, remember the work you were doing and you heal from the wounds, then you you then will you you then will find that you actually start doing the um, herbalist stuff now because that information is still there, but you've just tapped you've just tapped into it. So talents and gifts you might have had in previous lifetimes, you can tap into those and bring them back into um, in, in into the current into the current time. Um, you know, and again, you can do that with with the future, you know, gifts of talents in the future that you can bring back, um, you can tap into and bring back into your um, in, into your current time. But sometimes when you go back, it's not what you think it is. So I had a, um, a lady come to see me who was a little bit overweight um, and she found that, you know, she'd sit at the ta kitchen table and she'd eat biscuits um you know and she'd snack on stuff and a friend said to her bet you were starved in a previous lifetime that's why you eat a lot in in this lifetime so she came because she wanted to go back to her past life to find out where this her, um eating mm -hmm. habit had come from and to clear it so she did um what was very interesting is when we went back to that time that was causing the um the over the snacking the overeating now she went back a couple of hundred years but she wasn't poor or starved. She was actually a middle class woman who didn't have to work. In fact, she didn't do anything with her life. She had a very boring, sedentary, sedentary life. Nothing could happen. And, you know, on the point of death, because I always take people to death and beyond to the in-between lives, because I think that's very important. Um, her biggest regret was she hadn't done anything with her life. She had just let her life pass her by not done anything and by her understanding and realizing that and us healing that what it turned out was she actually had an interest that she wanted to read tarot cards she wanted to to start a business doing readings but she was procrastinating about it so instead of doing it what she had been doing was snacking mm. oh you can't do that so by going back she actually changed that um mindset she had and she lost weight because she stopped snacking and she now reads tarot cards so you know it's it's That's... amazing when, when you when you go back you're not really changing the past you're changing your attitude and the way you work and the way you work and see things in your current time yeah, that's amazing because some of the people are saying, okay, I need to go back and I need to change the past. And then when I change the past, the future will change automatically. So thank you for sharing this information because that was a really, really good, um, I would like to say, uh, words. You just when you put it in. But also I would like to say, adding to your previous um, speech, it's like about this, when you go to the future and when you tap in 
for your life purpose, for your soul purpose, because this is all about, isn't it? Because when you just only, I just only have a thing, you're doing the quantum jump, you're doing the quantum leap, you just only convert, oh God, that's like it's amazing stuff. You don't have to go five years, you can do something in one month or maybe over the night. People don't believe in the miracle. Actually, I don't believe in the miracle too, because I'm, I'm creating that miracle. If I really, 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 really focus, I'm not saying want or I need, because I know that's the blockages as well we are creating. <laughs> but I yeah. really foc- when I just only focus, I'm just only putting straight away that energy and just only boom. Uh, I would like to say I was waiting for something 20 years and that happened yesterday. I'm not going to tell now everyone what is it, but I'm going to tell it in the future. Uh, but it's like 20 years I was waiting because I was procrastinating, like you said. I was just only stopping myself. I was just only blocking myself. So that's beautiful. Quantum jump. That's amazing stuff. Oh, yeah. You can just Qu- only go and just do it, that stuff, isn't it? Because that's that's okay. your doing, isn't it? You're working on the quantum field. Anyway, we are on the, in the quantum field. Can, yeah. you tell, can you tell us, I'm so excited, how, to trust, how my body is moving, uh, about the um, soul path. So the people are just only trying to find in the soul path. Do we have just only one soul path or that the soul, uh, I mean, the purpose of the soul path or just only that soul path is changing constantly for us? Or do we have a power of it? Or maybe somebody's controlling us? I don't know. Oh my God, that is that. We could, <laughs> we could go, we could go so, we could go so deep on that, and we could go into all the conspiracy theories and every, everything on there. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm well versed on all of those. Um, but my understanding, um, and this is just from working with uh, my clients and my own experience um, yeah. with life, is that we choose, we do choose our lifetimes. We choose what we're, what's going to happen to us in that lifetime. Um, before we're born but unfortunately when we're born we tend to forget about it which then means we start meandering here there and everywhere so that straight path of whether we need to learn or we need to get to we've kind of like forgotten it so we stray off it um and when we stray off it we can then end up on a different timeline um not the one we chose to do in this in this lifetime so we could end up on an, another timeline now, sometimes because the um, path that we chose in this lifetime was so strong and it's something that we had to do, even if we divert off at some point, we will come back onto, onto that timeline um, the, that we were supposed to, um, or that, that we decided we were, we were going to come into this lifetime to do. So when, you un- so when you do future life or past life or you understand what you're sold here, Um, you can then actually take the steps and start doing what you decide to do. So it is, we we have got a a pre-dained idea of what we're doing and where we're going. We can step off and change timelines um, from that if, if we want. But ultimately, even if we don't do what we chose in this lifetime, then we, then we may have to come back and do it again in another lifetime if we get if we choose to um to 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 do that so it's it's kind of like yes um predestined but no it's not because we do have the power to to change ourselves we are our own autonomous being um and that's something we tend to forget um again when we're born with society everything that goes on um around us we fall into that um uh, sheep sheep mentality where we just follow what we're being told what everything's going on you know and we follow the the what's classed as the norm of life mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you're you're born you grow up you have your education you grow up you work you get married you have kids you die you, you know you, you just said that whereas when you actually take that control back and you go actually I'm actually going to decide what I do, how I do it, when I do it. You're actually creating the timeline that the chances are that is what you chose to do in this lifetime because you're taking back that control uh, um, uh, for you so that you can achieve what you need to do. And, you know, people like myself, yourself, other um, people that work in this field – 
We are just there to help guide you, to help you remember that you are that autonomous being and you are in control of where your life, of where your life goes. You know, if you decide to surrender and give control to other people, then that that's your path in this lifetime. You know, maybe that's what you chose to do. Maybe you forgot. But when you take back control, you can actually then see where you are going, what you are supposed to be doing and how to get there. Um, and that's not doing it in a, um, a rough shot way. That is doing it with love and compassion and understanding. That is what being an autonomous person is. It's not running um, rough shot over everyone else. You know, yes, this is my way and I'm going to throw everyone out, etc. Being your own autonomous person is knowing and understanding who you are, who you truly are, and how you can empower and better your life and other people's lives around you. Because we are, because although we're separate individuals, we are still one. We are a collective energy. And what we do does affect other people around us. Um, so as an autonomous being, you have to remember what you do does affect people around you. But when you do it with love, compassion and understanding, then that not just has a benefit for you, but it has a benefit for the whole collective, the whole community as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered the question or whether I just went off on a tangent somewhere. <laughs> No, that's okay. That's good. That's yeah. That's amazing because that's the reason. It's like a, okay, that's your soul path. Okay, you've got the power. You are the creator of your creation of your reality. But some of us are saying, "Oh no, that's the fault of the outside. The uh, the world is not changing because because because." And the way is like a, just go inside yourself and check what needs to be done. What do you need to do? And you created that. I'm sorry, that's a riddle, that's a maze for yourself. But I know that's a long journey to grasp that concept. There's a long journey to admit to yourself, okay, I did it for myself. I've done this for myself. I've just only creating that obstacle for myself. I know, I know, that's a so deep. Maybe for another time, we're going to dive deep inside that stuff because that's a soul path. It's like yeah. an amazing one. So how do people know they're changing the timeline? Because we are just only saying, what is the timeline? Do I need to go a different path? Or when you're in the forest and you've got the, that way, that way? And I don't know how, how you can describe changing the timeline. Um, it's your attitude. Um, and again, it's whether you take whether you take control of that as to what how how quickly you change the timeline. Okay. So an example, and I'll I'll use myself on this. Um you know, I've kind of like known where my my life is life is going, you know, what my purpose is in this lifetime. But a couple of years ago, I literally had the rug pulled out from under my feet. I won't go into details, but literally yeah. overnight, everything just it was like, what? Um, and, you know, and I, I know a lot of people, are, you know, this has happened to a lot of people, especially since they're. Um, you know, uh, the a uh, few years ago when we when when we were all locked in our homes, etc. And a lot of people have had and are still having. And with where everything's going on, you know that their life that rug is being pulled from under under their feet. And I remember all the emotions I went through. You, you know, there you know, there's the anger, the grief, the why the pity party, why me? Um, you know, all the emotions that you can think of. But because I have the background that I have, I kind of like realized, you know, I gave I gave myself, you know, the the, the time to 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 do that grieving process to 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 do that. But I also realized that I had I could change that path, you know, I how my attitude towards towards that was. You, you know, I could I could make a difference. I could either let it completely consume me and take me off the path that I, that I was on because I'd then be in that um, depression, that um, self-pity, that, um, oh, I can't do anything now. Or I could look in and go, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I change the outcome of, of, of this? I mean, obviously, certain outcomes are certain outcomes, but it's the way you, 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 deal, you deal with it. And, you know that's where my angelic crazy came in you know that's where the future and the past lives came in the guided meditations the healing 
and I allowed all that stuff to um, happen to me. You know, obviously I can do um, a lot of stuff for myself, but I was lucky enough that I'm surrounded by like-minded people who are able to were able to help me go into the past. Yeah. Um, you know, go go into the go into the future. Um, except, you know, they they did, you know, healing, you know, they did healing on me as well. Um, but it allowed me to see and I I and I allowed myself to see the bigger picture. Okay, why did this happen? Okay. And now I understand why that happened. You know, I can see the bigger picture um, of it. You know, I don't bear any grievance against everyone involved in it, um, y y you know, because that was part of what I was supposed to experience in this lifetime. But how I dealt with it was com was was to allow me to have that strength to actually move on and not allow it to overwhelm me and and change my timeline, take me down a completely different path off, off the path that I'd chosen to be of service to people in, in this world now. You know, it wasn't a quick fix overnight. You mm -hmm. know, I, I had to have counselling. You know, I did go through the period of losing weight, you know, weight and everything like that. But I was able to work through it and not allow it to take control of uh, to control of my life, I took control of it, and I think that is so important that people need to remember. Whatever happens to you, um, you know, and it can be the worst possible thing um, to you. You once you've, you know, allow yourself that grief, that emotion, because you need to express those things. You won't be human if if you didn't have if you didn't have that. But you don't allow it to overwhelm you. You take back control of it and you go, OK, can I do this myself? Maybe, maybe not. OK, so I need to find other people to help me um, do this. But I want to take control. And when you when you take that step, go, I'm going to take control. Those people will then start coming into your life to give you the guidance to help you so that you can get back onto that path or onto a completely new path that is more aligned with what you were supposed to be here. So it could have been that, that path you were on, if you're falling into um, that, uh, that pity, that self-doubt, that depression, that would have taken you down a timeline that maybe wasn't for your highest good. But because you took control of it, you looked at the situation, you allowed healing to take place. You then go into a different timeline, which is a better timeline and one that is more aligned with your life purpose and that will bring you more joy and happiness and to those around you as well. That's good. I would like to suddenly say, and um, that's a question that just suddenly pop up, uh, it's like, um, so when you're going through that grief, depression or something, that kind of the energy, that's, um, I'm, say, I'm not saying good or bad, but energy, energy which is allowing you to learn the lesson from it. So if you're not going uh, to learn the lesson from, if, if you're not willing to learn the lesson, or let's say this way, willingness, willing yes. to learn the lesson. So you will be staying the same place because it's no movement. I just only recommend the people, I don't know if you watch that movie, that was a design, that was a created for the children, the, the, the soul movie. Uh, it's like a, that tiny small soul and they've been created for the children and I'm still watching because that's amazing they show how the lost soul was uh, I would like to say reactivated because that was just only um, covered by the all the low dark energy I'm saying that grief that depression and that was a blanket over them but when the love and the gratitude and compassion arrived that was everything was dismantling and that was like a going away and the soul was start shining again. So it's the same way, but we need to allow ourselves to be honest and just only willing, just only one word can change the, your life, isn't it? So, okay, I'm willing to change and it's going away, straight away. So that's changing the timeline. So if you're going to hard time, so for example, in my life it was like a really, really, like you said, the rug was like a woo. I just say, like, well, yeah, ooh, well, I don't want to be here. I would like to leave. I would like to escape. Exit point, exit point. But it's something inside you saying, no, no exit point, not now. You've got much more to do. I said, okay, I have to, okay, again. Anyway, 
So that's the good idea. That's a, I would say good idea, good concept, and good. I would like to say time in your life, event in your life, and I would like to articulate. Uh, maybe you agree with me, uh, right? It's like a, doesn't matter if you are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Even if you are 80, even if you are 90, you've got a still time to do your work on yourself. Even that rug will be pulled off from your feet from the ground. You've got that capability inside yourself. I'm saying from my experience, probably you are yeah. going to agree. Doesn't matter the age. The age is like a, what is the age? <laughs> the, the age is just the body. It's, it's just, it's just, it's just your body, That's you know. It's, it's biology. It's um, matter. Uh, you, you know that that is all your body your your body your body is the age thing but your soul your mind is eternal you know your soul is eternal it doesn't yeah. it doesn't age that's true that's true and also how do people can uh, support themselves would you mind just when you share some information how do people support themselves on their journey on their life journey just finding that soul that is not the soul, the, soul the, the purpose of the soul path. How how they can support them? So how they're not going to give them up on themselves? Um, great, great question. Um, it's easy to give up on yourself. Let, let's just put it that way. We we know as humans know, and what society um puts on us, what our peers, our family are um uh put on us you know be, because we do care what other people think about us and i think that's one of the the saddest things about young people these days is that they care what society around um, thinks you know thinks about them they 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 don't have that autonomy that strength say this is me this is this is who i am i mean as as a child i was that you know if a friend said to me well i don't want to be your friend because you won't do anything i would go well, that's fine you obviously are, um, don't respect me, so I don't want to be your friend if you can't, you know. Yeah. So, so, so I, I, I was fairly lucky in that I, you know, I, I was my own individual as a child. But a lot of young people don't have that now, and because and that's because of society, and we've we've allowed it um, to 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 happen. But when you get that inclination. And you kind of go, actually, I do want to take control of my destiny now. I do want to uh, and be my autonomous person. It it is it is an inner strength that you can find yourself. You know that that spark is within you, but you may need outside help and guidance. You know, even myself and yourself. You know that great uh, um, yeah. thing, heal or heal thyself. Um, you know, you know, I still need outside help sometimes um, with with stuff. So it's remembering it. Don't be afraid to ask. There is always going to be someone there to support and help you, even in the darkest hour. If you don't realize it, you've got angels, you've got guides, even if you haven't got a physical um, thing with you, you have the spiritual side, the you know, the the angels and um, galactic beings, guides, etc who you can call on to give you that support to help you get to the point where you can seek human, you know, other human support. And that, that, that will, that will come into you. And, and you know, and if you, you by yourself, you know, you can do guide. There are so many guided meditations out there that can help, you know, get your chakras back into a line that can um, help you center yourself you know, get into that 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 peaceful mindset. You know, going out in nature, hugging trees. There are so many things that are outside that can also um, help help you as help you as well. And obviously, as I said, people like myself, yourself, other therapists, again, uh, you know, can help support you on on your on your journey um, to to um discover your life per your life path your purpose your soul purpose um or to help you on that that journey you know not everyone wants to find their soul purpose but they just want to live a peaceful happy life um and again you know that's connecting with your angels your guides the spirits um you know people that you resonate with um that can help you on your journey but you have to remember that that if you go for outside help, it's always people that are going to help and guide you and allow you to make those decisions. They are not going to tell you 
what you should or shouldn't be doing. Um, and, you know, you, you have to have discernment because as much as I'd like to say the spiritual, the holistic world is all love and light, there are people that aren't love and light in it. You know, that's just that's just the way society life was created um, in the future. They're a lot different, but in the, but the times we live in now, you do have to be discerning. Um, and even if you're, you know, calling not so much angels, but if you're calling spirit guides, etc., you have to be discerning about the guidance and the information you're given. If it's done in a loving, positive manner that allows you to make those decisions, then then this is that listen to that either advice information. If it's stuff coming in that tells you what you should do is a bit negative, um, makes you feel bad um, for not doing it. You don't want to be listening to, to to that information because that is not true guidance and help. Um, that is someone trying to control, trying to control you. Um, so, yeah, you, you have to be discerning. But there is support out there, whether it is around therapists, whether it's online stuff, whether um, it's being out in nature with trees, um, you, you know, that is one of the best connection things that that, 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 you, that you've got. But I know not everyone, you know, if you live in a busy town, you, you might not have access to um, trees and and, you know, everything. Not every town city has a park area that, that, that you that you can go to. But then you can bring a plant into your house. You can bring several plants into your house and that gives you that connection. You know, even if you just trail your fingers in the dirt, you're getting that that connection um, with Earth, that support um, of, of, of Earth. So Sam, that makes sense. Have I answered that question? Yes, of course you answered the question. And also I would like to add, you've got the water in your house. Come on. You can go and take a shower. You can imagine the shower is over mm, you know, washing the all low vibration from you. You don't want it. You don't need it in this time, in this lifetime. So you always, you're going to find the solution because like you said, the angels, they are surrounding you. If you don't believe the angels, it's okay. But definitely, definitely your spirit guides, your loved ones. Oh my goodness. That's so many stuff we've got. We are surrounded of. That's so amazing. We can talk and on and on. It's so many. You've asked all of my questions actually, which I've written all the way. I didn't just only if I just only, I just only look at that. I said, like, okay, oh, we've done this, we've done that. Oh my goodness, so many stuff, and we can go that's much. The universe. More. Yeah, that's the universe. I just only wrote and said, okay, let me guide, let me be guided anyway, straight away. Yes, we've got so many questions. I have got so many questions, but let's go maybe just only wrap it up a little bit. Maybe we can go and find the time for another uh, podcast. And um, then I'll maybe I'll be talking about just only the soul because I'd love to talk about the soul. And I would like to just only give that tiny small pieces. And oh, no, oh, that's so fascinating. Um, well, you're, you're going to be coming on my show um, in a few weeks' time. So you can go. Oh, God. The soul is amazing. <laughs> this is oh God, crazy. Yeah, the one thing is like a soul is not that it's coming from the top to down. The soul is a vast as a consciousness. So we are squeezing it, condensed in that body. Ooh, that's why we couldn't feel that stretch, you know. So, oh. And that's why sometimes I don't know how about you, right? I'm just only really feeling like sometimes when I'm exercising, I'm just only really sitting, I'm feeling so huge. I say, what's going on? I'm looking at my body saying, Oh, what is it? <laughs> Does I choose it? Oh, that yeah. stuff? Ooh. Oh yeah, I'm going to be better design designer next time. I'm going to design my body different way. But anyway, what came uh, when you had a challenging time? I'm always asking the mm, the beautiful souls during my podcast. Actually, at the end of the podcast, when you had a really challenging time in your life, what really supports you or what really helped you? And that could be maybe mantra, music, or maybe one word. Would you mind just on your share with others? Um, yeah, I would say that what came through um, when I had that challenge, when I had that challenge in time mm -hmm. was trust, trust wow. that the universe is there for you. Trust there was a reason why this happened. Um, you know, you will not experience things in this lifetime unless you are able to cope with them. Um, and I know that's difficult because some people don't cope with things. Um, but 
but we do have the ability to do that if if we trust and we look beyond what what has what has happened and most important we have the support the community whether that is you know um the angels you know the fact that i've got my guardian angels i'm surrounded i talk to angels all the time um you know unicorns dragons you know my whole spiritual team i've always got their support and support is so important and i was so lucky as well in that i had external support with their, um other therapists like minded people that that are part of my that are part of my community so yeah i would say it was trust community and support uh, were the three the three major things that really helped me um go you know survive that that big thing that happened to me yeah but the trust you just when you open the game like a box of the pandora the trust what is the trust where is the trust where is oh how we can oh my, let's go live with that because i'm going dive deep in straight away yeah trusting 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 um where the people can find you um if they would like to contact with you and what they would like to go to the session with you in the future because that would be a quantum jump that would be amazing one well, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, the easiest way to find me is my website, which is www.radiantangelenergy.co.uk, because that obviously has most of the stuff on. If you want to find me on social media, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, Pinterest under Radiant Angel Energy. Um, I have a weekly um, podcast called um, Angels and Destiny, of which you're going to be a guest there, um, a guest oh, on on the show yes. that goes. That goes out every Monday, um, 8 p.m. UK time. Um, I'm also uh, now going out every Friday live, doing a pulling a card and doing a guided meditation on Facebook and YouTube. So the shows go out live on Facebook and and YouTube. Um, so yeah, you can you can find me practically anywhere on social media under Radiant Angel Energy. And if you would like, I do have a free gift. Um, uh, where you can um, get a, a free PDF to um, connect with your guides and angels, or you can choose a future life progression recording. Um, so I do have that free gift um, for people um, if if they would if they would like it. Um, you can find that on my website, or I can give you the um, link to it. Um, so yeah, so find me anywhere on social media. Radiant Angel Energy. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time and that much information. So I'm feeling like maybe we can meet next time or just when you talk a little bit more about the soul. That would be great. Yes, sounds absolutely amazing and brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ray. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you.